Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I am Marie for your cloud learning journey partner. In today's video, we're gonna cover AWS cost optimization. So we'll uh, go through some ways, how can we optimize AWS cost, then we'll also see how to track AWS uh, cost. And after watching today's video, you will have a better understanding like how we can optimize your AWS account cost. So before starting the video, I just want to talk about myself. Well, I am Arif. I do have more than eight years of experience in cloud computing and cybersecurity. I hold multiple certification in AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. Uh, also, I hold certification in uh, CISSP and CCSP. You can see my certification in my background. Well, this channel is all about uh, cloud computing, cybersecurity, and uh, IT carry related uh, advice so if you're interested in this field this channel is definitely for you i'm gonna upload content in a very frequently banner so please uh, like and subscribe to my channel so that you can see my upcoming videos so without further delay let's explore aws cost i have logged into my personal aws account and uh, here uh, currently this aws cost management uh, console is uh, open in a tab so uh, first, uh, we're going to see how to create a budget under AWS uh, account. So if I go to here, this section budget, right now, we don't have any uh, budget set up for our account, but it's always good because just think about it. You do have a prod uh, account, AWS account, and there you are, uh, you have deployed a prod uh, application and you are using multiple AWS services. Uh, but if you don't have a budget, then uh, it's very easy to get a long list of AWS bill that you won't expect. And at the end of the month, you will just uh, ask yourself what really happened. But if you had AWS budget uh, there, it will help you so to track the current uh, usage. And if you see like some services you are paying a lot, you can uh, try to do some optimize in your environment. So uh, we'll do that uh, right now in uh, our AWS console. <clears throat> so uh, here I'm clicking this create a budget. So here we do have a few options. We can uh, use a template. It's a simplified version or we can go for the customized uh, or advanced one. Uh, for the sake of this video, we want to keep it as simple as possible. So for that reason, I'm going to just go with this use a template simplified version. So at the template, there are a few options, uh, zero spent budget. So create a budget that notifies you once your spending exists 0.1 cent, uh, which is above the AWS free tier. So suppose you are a beginner in AWS and you really want to use uh, AWS uh, service for just a learning purpose and you don't want to pay any additional fees uh, under AWS account. So you just really want to use the free tier and you don't want to pay an, uh, a penny more. Uh, so th for that reason, this uh, zero spend budget is definitely for you. And uh, if you're uh, running any dev or prod related environment, then you can always go for this monthly cost budget. And there is a daily saving uh, plan coverage bucket. Uh, uh, and the last one is daily reservation utilization bucket. So in ideal scenario, most of the time people use these two, the number one is zero spend uh, budget for the new learners and uh, the monthly cost budget for uh, uh, per, uh, for the people who are using AWS for their dev or prod environment. So uh, to uh, replicate the uh, real world scenario, we're gonna go with the monthly cost budget because it's uh, more uh, likely that people are, uh, will create this sort of uh, budget plan so i'm going to choose monthly budget and uh, first i'm going to give it a name my monthly cost budget i'm going to call it test uh, budget because uh, i'm going to delete it anyway okay so here enter the budget amount so here we have to enter the amount that we are willing to spend at most so here uh, the threshold is defined as hundred dollar well for me if i want to talk about myself well uh, i really use this account for any sort of work it's more like creating my tutorials and most of the time i'm just using the free resources so it's very unlikely that i'll hit this hundred mark real soon so for that reason i need to uh uh low i need to put a low number in here so i'm gonna put uh, let's uh, the let's say ten dollars and uh, uh, now we have to add an email recipient uh, so the email address 
so uh, whenever uh, we exit this uh, threshold number then we'll get an email to our uh, email address to get notified so uh, I'm just go with a random one for now uh, it's a smart it's uh, checking that it's whether it's a valid email address or not that's good okay uh, after that uh, here are some uh, template settings so this template has default configurations that can be changed later so this is uh, how it is created so once it's created if I hit this create budget option in here it will create a budget for me so current versus budgeted so here we can also see how much you have spent uh, compared to our budget that's cool right so now we know how to create a budget and uh, after that uh, one uh, more important thing that i want to cover into this video is uh, saving plans well before uh, creating a saving plan i want to talk a little bit more about the saving plans like what is saving plan well <clears throat> at the beginning of your application deployment we are not quite sure like how much resources we are using what type of ec2 servers we need to use for our application what kind of load we may expect so it's uh, very likely at that point we're gonna use uh, our on-demand basis in-demand basis uh, is to servers but uh, after a few months a few years we're gonna learn more about our application we will uh, be able to predict our uh, load our traffic uh, traffic hikes when you're gonna expect some extra traffic at that point we are ready to go for a reserved instance and in that uh, case uh, this saving plan is gonna really help us so if we click this savings plan here it will give us a short uh, summary like what are saving plans uh, so it's a flexible pricing model that offers low prices on AWS usage Inter and uh, just we are committing the, uh, that we'll use it for uh, uh, maybe one to three years and for that reason AWS is going to give us uh, discounted prices. So anyway, we're going to use our resources. So if we just commit to use the resource, then we're going to get discounted prices. So it's always good to use these uh, savings plans once we have a better understanding about our uh, architecture or our usage. All right. So uh, if I click here, purchase a saving plan, if I click in here, there are three options. The first one is compute saving plans. The second one is easy to install savings plans. And the last one is SageMaker saving plans. Well, whenever we're dealing with any machine learning uh, stuff, then we'll use the SageMaker. So this is a very specific service. The compute and EC2 instance uh, service plans are mostly used. Uh, uh, so for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to go with the EC2 instance savings plan. So here, after selecting this option, then we get a few more options in here, like term. So here we have two options, one year or three year. So uh, let's go for three years of uh, term and the region here, we need to specify the region. The reason we need to specify the region, if you think about this one, that means that you are allocating a specific compute power for a specific region for a specific year. That means AWS will make sure it is reserved for you. Whenever you want, you can use it. And uh, for that, we need to specify the region, the type, and the term. So once you specify that, then we can purchase the saving plan, basically. So uh, I'm going to choose uh, North Virginia. region and after that the instance family well here we can find all the instance family that uh, are offered by aws and let's uh, go for a t family uh, we're gonna go to uh, go for this t3 family and uh, the good part is like whenever we selecting a family t3 under t3 there are different uh, uh, size uh, t3 uh, medium t3 large t3 small so it doesn't matter which uh, size we're using as long as uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, under the uh, instance family the type that is the t3 we are all good and a good question could be once we purchase this uh, saving plan how we will make sure that uh, we are using the saving plan well if uh, 
after purchasing the saving plan, if you uh, deploy or uh, if you launch a EC2 server with the same configuration like you uh, deployed a T3 EC2 uh, EC2 server, then automatically our saving plan will be in use. So you just need to match with your uh, saving plan type with your EC2 instance type. If you do that, your saving plan will be used 100%. So it's pretty straightforward. And after that, the purchase commitment. So here uh, we do have a few options. So first, let's go for the payment option. So we do have uh, three options. One is all upfront, we can pay everything. So if we select this one, that means we are paying the complete cost at the um, uh, like upfront and the partial upfront that means we can pay some of the payment right now and uh, the rest we can pay per uh, monthly basis and uh, the last one is no upfront so uh, you want to use this saving plan but you don't want to pay any upfront cost uh, then you can go for this no upfront option okay so i'm gonna choose this one and then the enter hourly uh, hourly commitment amount so here if you see this one your hourly commitment as a saving plan rates see applicable rates for saving plans so if i open this one in here so we're gonna choose t3 because we have a specific t3 there first the region that is North Virginia. Payment option, we will go for no upfront, tenancy shared, cause we don't want to get this uh, uh, dedicated host, then we have to pay extra for that. And select the term, let's go for three years. And uh, yeah, so now if we go for D3 in here, we can see like uh, if we go for with this uh, configuration for on demand if we uh, use this t3 medium just for an uh for an example we uh on demand we, we would have paid by like 0 0.0416 uh dollar but with the saving plan we are paying like 50 percent discounted price isn't it cool like just think about it you are not uh, paying an upfront you are just making a commitment that you're going to use it for a very long time maybe a few years and for that you're getting 50 percent of discount uh i think this is a great deal so uh here we understood the pricing so i'm gonna just uh, copy this one and i'm gonna paste it here so yeah so after that, uh, here we are getting a summary, like the total cost is $541 and monthly payment is just $15. That means we are paying like 50% discounted prices for our T3 medium. This is awesome. So here under the start date, uh, it's optional. If you want to uh, uh, specify a start date, you can do it. If I just click add to a card option and just uh, purchase this, then it will be in an activated state. Well, for the uh, for this tutorial, I'm just showing you the process, but currently I don't need any saving plans for that. I'm not gonna create one saving plans for me uh, right now, but uh, it's always uh, really helpful to actually have this saving plan because you are cutting off your cost like almost in like 50 percent which is great and just think about it if you were uh, uh, deploying a very uh, big application and uh, it requires a lot of compute power for that uh, in uh, on demand basis you are paying a lot if you can cut the cost half in half that means you can save a tons of money so for that reason whenever possible please uh, try to think if it's possible to use the saving plan because pretty much like you're using the same stuff just paying a little bit uh, less isn't it uh, beneficial guys congratulations guys for reaching this far of this video today we covered some uh, cool stuff we have covered how to create uh, budgets under aws account then we have also covered how to uh, create savings plans which can cut off our aws uh, cost almost like uh, half 
uh, it's a bit cool so um, I really wanted to, do, to keep this uh, video short so maybe I will create another video where I will share some other tips to do the cost optimization in AWS and also doing a kind of like how to track the AWS cost uh, well if you guys have any questions related to this uh, strategy that I showed today please let me know under this comment section and I'm gonna reply back in a very short period of time well if you want me to cover any specific topic also let me know under this comment section and I'll cover that for you uh, thank you so much guys for watching my videos if you found this video helpful please uh, like and subscribe to my channel so that you can see my upcoming videos well that's all for today have a great and wonderful day